How are we doing everyone? We've got the holidays right around the corner. The Bulls have a game later this evening. And because it's Wednesday, you know it, where I'm going to continue the Would You Rather Hot Take series on this channel. And in this week's episode, we're going to be going through your Would You Rather scenarios that you have submitted, either on the channel or on the Discord. Also, a big shout out to Benchmob.com for sponsoring this video, but more on that in a little bit. And also a huge congrats to the winner of the jersey giveaway of the over 300 of you who left comments on the last video of your most memorable Bulls moment. The winner of the drawing was Lawrence Taylor with this memorable moment of MJ's spectacular move in the 91 finals where he swished his hands midair for the layup. And Lawrence has been one of the OG subscribers who has been tuning into the channel for a while. So I was glad to see you win, my man. You've been here since the beginning. So congrats to you and I'll work with you directly on sending you the jersey of your choice. And thanks to all of those who left their memorable moments, as I mentioned in that video. I'll likely be making a separate video talking about and reflecting on these moments in Bulls history. But anyway, let's get into your would you rather scenario, shall we? So what's going on, everyone? You are listening to Bull Central here. Hope you're well doing well. Let's get us kicked off with our first would you rather. And that comes to us from Boney Levine Still Daddy. If you go by their recent performances so far this season, would you rather have Anthony Davis or Vucevic? Um, you know, I know a lot of people have been disappointed with Vucevic so far this season, which to an extent, rightfully so, he has struggled, hasn't played like the all-star caliber player that we thought he would be, and has been pretty inconsistent in his play and shooting as well. But the same can be said about Anthony Davis right now. He's been performing pretty poorly so far this year for an all NBA caliber level player. He's also injury prone. That's the biggest struggle with Anthony Davis throughout his career. And he's currently out for at least the next four weeks. So, you know, for as bad as Vucevic's shooting has been this season, Anthony Davis is shooting a putrid 18% from three so far this year. Not that Anthony Davis has ever been a stellar three point shooter, uh, but for his career average of 30% to now 18%. Yes, he's still an all-star caliber player, but his performance so far this season hasn't been as great, and his injuries have to be a concern if you're the Lakers, whereas with Vucevic, who is much more durable. I mean, if I had to choose, I would still probably take Anthony Davis just because he's younger, he's a better scorer overall, he's a much better defender, but honestly, based on their current performance, it isn't that far off to where I would say absolutely take Anthony Davis hands down over Vucevic because people forget just important how important Vucevic's floor spacing and passing is to this Bulls offense. Next, we've got Big Guwap2324. Would you rather have 2011 MVP Rose or MVP 2001 Iverson? Had a brief debate over this with my homie last time. Um, I mean, take this with a grain of salt because I'm a little biased, uh, but I'm taking Rose and, and kind of hands down, to be honest. Part of it is actually because I was never a big fan of Allen Iverson, even before Derrick Rose came onto the scene. I know a lot of people are going to give me an earful in the comments for that remark, but I was just never a fan of AI's game. I think a lot of it had to do with his attitude. Like I'm kind of old school in this mentality, but I like guys who play hard, work hard, show up as leaders and play smart basketball. Like Iverson was an incredibly talented and gifted player and could score at will with his incredible handles but he also had a major attitude problem with his teammates, coach, and his organization. And he was also a bit of a ball hog. So for Rose, I mean, I would much prefer his explosiveness, his handles, his hops, and more importantly, his calm and collected attitude and humbleness for how he played the game of basketball. Like I said, I know I'm biased though. Next, we've got Yao Ming. Would you rather Felicio or Cornette on this team? Oh my God, pass. I mean, I don't know, man. How do we even choose between these two? I guess Cornette because he can shoot decently well, but I would prefer to never have to choose between either of these guys ever again. I have heard that Felicio has been playing decent overseas, and I believe Cornette just got himself a 10-day contract with a team via a hardship exception. But yeah, I would rather choose neither of these guys. Uh, next, we've got Apex Frazier. Would you rather try to win it all this year and make big trades, Sabonis or other, sacrificing P will or wait to run it back next year with a healthy team. So I made a video just last week on this topic specifically of what it would look like to go all in for the Bulls and whether it would be worth making an all in trade for a guy like Sabonis or Christian Wood or Jeremy Grant and basically all of the power forwards that are on the trading block for their respective teams or at least have been in trade rumors anyway. And to be honest, as much as I like the idea of going all in and trying to push for a title this season, 
I don't know if it's worth sacrificing most of your future for something that might not pan out because the thing is, the Bulls are a good team and the front office has done a great job of positioning them to be title contenders in the near future. And they sacrificed a lot of their future in order to get there already by trading away multiple draft picks, Wendell Carter Jr., Larry Markkinen. So the thought of throwing away more young assets and draft capital, which is what it would take to get someone like a DeMontis Sabonis and likely more than that, for me personally, I would rather them just hold on to the young players that they have where it makes sense, of course, and run it back for a title push next season after they've secured re-signing Levine and making additional moves in the offseason. Next, we've got, and along similar lines, we have Jeremy. Would you rather have Sabonis or Turner, considering what it would take to get each? I mean, the thing is, Sabonis is the better player overall, hands down. He's a two-time All-Star. He's an elite scorer and rebounder. But at the same time, he doesn't fit as well as someone like Miles Turner, who gives the Bulls elite rim protection, shot blocking, and he's a decent scorer and rebounder as well. Like, adding Sabonis gives us another strong offensive threat in the front court, but with Vucevic, the Bulls really need strong defense alongside him. And that's what Miles Turner would offer. I mentioned this before as well, but Turner has actually improved his three-point shooting significantly over the course of his career, which then provides another floor spacer for the Bulls. And on top of that, you don't have to give up as much for Turner as you would for Sabonis because Turner's trade value isn't going to be as high and his contract is also slightly lower as well. For the Pacers though, even though you know they've indicated they're making Sabonis and Turner available in a trade, they're still going to want a considerable package in return for Sabonis simply because he's an all-star. Now, before I go into the next Would You Rather, because we have Christmas coming up in just a few days, and if you're like me, you're probably behind on your holiday shopping. Please don't tell my wife. But if you are behind on your shopping, well then, I've got the perfect gift for you or your loved ones with an exclusive offer to this channel from Benchmob.com. If you guys remember the Benchmob from back in 2011, well, well, 10 years later, with the energy, passion, and hustle that our current bench plays with, the Benchmob has been brought back to Chicago. And just like 10 years ago, Benchmob.com has the perfect Benchmob gear from t-shirts to wristbands. And if you use the code BULLCENTRAL20, all one word, they're going to give you 20% off your order. So check out Benchmob.com. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well as my code uh, and get yourself some bench mob gear today and of course appreciate the support if you guys use my code but now let's get back into the content so next we've got brandon wright would you rather pre-draft lonzo ball or zion williamson also would you rather more national games or watching stacy king and adam amin Ooh, a twofer uh i mean the second would you rather is easy uh i will much take watching stacy and adam any day over the national broadcasters. I'll especially take them over other teams' local broadcasters. Like that's seriously the worst when I'm not able to watch the Bulls live broadcast due to blockout restrictions from NBA League Pass. I'm forced to listen to the opposing team's commenters. But anyway, as for your first would you rather, I mean, I know a lot of people aren't gonna like this, but come on now. How are you not gonna pre-draft going into uh, NBA draft versus Zion? and Lonzo. Like as much as Zion has struggled with injuries and it raises huge concerns over the future of his career and his overall longevity, he still has massive, massive upside potential, franchise player type potential. And as great as Lonzo has been, and he's not as injury prone as Zion, I would take Zion over Lonzo if I'm choosing between drafting either of these players. Next, we've got Ricky Davila. Uh, would you rather have Sabonis for Kobe, Derek Jones Jr., and two second rounders, or Turner and a second round pick for Kobe and a first. Uh, well, first of all, the Pacers are instantly going to hang up the phone if either of these trade packages were presented to them, especially the first one for Sabonis, because both of these guys are worth considerably more than these offers. Like Kobe, Derek Jones Jr. and two second rounders is nowhere close to matching the value of an all-star in DeMontis Sabonis. The Turner one is a little bit closer, but even for Turner, I would say the Pacers are going to turn down that trade. They're going to be looking for more in return for him. But if somehow the Bulls were able to pull off either of these trades to where the Pacers agreed, I mean, as much as I think Turner fits with the Bulls better, you got to jump all over that exchange for Sabonis. Like if you're going to get an all-star power forward and all you have to do is give up Kobe, Derek Jones Jr. in two seconds, yeah, I'll take that any day. And even if the fit isn't there, you can still flip him for a better return to another team at a later time. Next, we've got Dan Franco. If Vucevic was still in Orlando and you have the chance of Vucevic or Sabonis, who would you take? 
I say Sabonis for the energy and age. Uh, wow, so much Sabonis <laughs> would you rather scenarios uh, in this video. Uh, I see what's been on your guys' minds. Um, I mean, assuming the Bulls never made that trade for Vucevic last season, you're saying Vucevic and Sabonis, who would I take? Um, yeah, I'm on a similar wavelength as you. I think Sabonis, because of his age, he's quicker, a little more athletic, he's in the peak of his prime. Sabonis probably makes more sense than someone like Vucevic. I mean, it's a close one though, because Vuce, um, you know, when he is on, he is an elite scorer and rebounder. But if you're looking at it from a long-term perspective, knowing that Sabonis has more years ahead of him, more prime years anyway, Sabonis is likely the way to go. Next, we've got Vucci, pretty simple one, he says. Would you rather have Devin Booker or Zach Levine? Try not to be biased. Um, well, it's hard for me not to be biased in this scenario, really because as Bulls fans, we've had to defend the whole Booker over Levine narrative for a while now, since Booker finally started winning. I think people forget that once Devin Booker actually got some quality talent around him with Chris Paul and the emergence of DeAndre Ayton, that certainly helped with the quote unquote winning factor. And now that you've seen Levine finally get some help, his team is winning now too. Now we'll see where that ultimately ends up going because it's still relatively early in the season, but it's clear that narrative shifts once guys finally start getting talent around them. But look, they're both great players, both phenomenal scorers, efficient scorers. But really, if you look at the numbers anyway, Zach is a more efficient player in terms of his scoring. He's a better shooter from deep than Booker is overall, and really from the field as a whole. Like we have to remember that, you know, Zach nearly hit the 50-40-90 club last season. And believe it or not, Zach is actually a better rebounder and passer than Booker is. Like all around, I actually believe Levine is the better player between the two. But they're also both pretty close in terms of the tier or status level of player and where they stand in the league. So if I had to choose between the two, I'm still taking Zach Levine. Anyway, guys, I'll end it there for this edition of Would You Rather. Next week, it'll be your Bulls hot take, so feel free to submit your takes below in the comments or in the Discord. Don't forget to get your bench mob gear using the discount code below, and don't forget the Bulls have a game later tonight. I'll have a live game chat for that as well. Until then, guys, as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan, as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.